Wait a minute. Are you happy now? Hello everyone, it's Sammy from Push Square and I'm here today to talk to you about PlayStation Plus or PlayStation Minus as you may have imaginatively dubbed it. Now there's absolutely no doubt that PlayStation Plus was one of the big drivers for the positivity that Sony took into the launch of the PlayStation 4. But while it was giving away big, big games every single month on the PlayStation 3, the quality of the service has, for many, declined over the past few months. So what's gone wrong? Well, it's important to note that the value of the service hasn't actually declined. We looked at the sum of the titles given away in 2014 and 2015 and found that they were worth over $1,000 if you purchased them individually. But the days of getting games like Red Dead Redemption and Assassin's Creed 3 seem so far away. So what's happened to a once great service? Well, it's important to remember that PlayStation Plus was totally optional on the PlayStation 3. And while I don't have the numbers to hand, it's likely that there are only one to two million people subscribed to the service. Now, if we compare that to the PlayStation 4, back in 2014, Sony had over seven million subscribers. And it's likely that that number has now increased to over 25 million at the time of recording. So I think one of the big changes is that publishers are just simply unwilling to give their games away to such an enormous number of people. If you consider the PlayStation 3, when a game like Red Dead Redemption was given away to one or two million subscribers, that game still had a shelf life and the increased word of mouth that PlayStation Plus enabled meant that Rockstar probably saw an increase in sales after the game was given away. But when you're giving away a game to potentially 25 to 30 million people, the model suddenly doesn't make sense. Yes, a publisher may be able to make money by selling DLC, but they're not gonna sell any retail copies or digital copies of their game for that matter once they've given it away to practically the entirety of the PS4's install base. And I think that's why you're seeing a real reduction in the number of retail games given away on PlayStation Plus these days. Now there definitely is still value to the model for developers. If you look at a game like Rocket League, that can owe much of its success these days to the fact that it was given away to so many PlayStation Plus subscribers, creating a massive online install base for people to play with. And I also think that there are advantages to the way that Sony's been given away brand new indie releases because there's never any possibility of you getting a duplicate that you may already own. But I think that one of the big things that needs to change on PlayStation Plus in the coming months is that PS3 and Vita support is dropped. I would hazard to imagine that many of you watching this video care most about the PS4 games and that's where Sony should be investing its resources, in my opinion. But what do you think? Has PlayStation Plus been a victim of its own success? What can Sony do to fix it? And what would satisfy you on a monthly basis when it comes to the instant game collection? Let us know in the comments section below what you think of the current state of PlayStation Plus. And remember to keep it locked to Push Square for much more news and opinion on Sony's subscription service. Thanks for watching.